massive FPS improvements, an eating button, other fixes, stealth improvements, and more. There is plenty in this beta patch that just got launched for Starfield. And I've been playing it for about a day and it's pretty damn good. So let's talk about it. Let me know your thoughts on the patch, if it's making you return to Starfield or if you're still playing Starfield. So I think the most interesting thing for me anyway is the DLSS changes. Or well, it's not really changes if it didn't exist before, right? But so with this patch that is currently in beta, so you, you do have to opt into it on Steam. So you can't get it on Xbox currently. I'm not actually sure if you can get it on Game Pass if you're playing Starfield on Game Pass, though it will eventually come to those platforms. Although Xbox probably won't get DLSS for other reasons. But so what this patch adds is that NVIDIA DLS support for PC players. So compatible NVIDIA graphics cards can now use DLSS super resolution, deep learning anti-aliasing DLAA and NVIDIA reflex low latency and DLSS frame generation. So this is really interesting. Like it comes with basically the full package. It's not just DLSS, it's frame gen. I assume it'd be DLSS 3.5 if it does have like the frame gen and the low latency stuff anyway. But the main difference here that I've noticed from testing this with my 4090 is that that ghosting effect you get from FSR that sort of encapsulates around images is sort of gone, which is really good for DLSS. That's a big difference between DLSS and FS FSS. Yeah. These acronyms, guys. FSR. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Digital Foundry will do like a breakdown of all these changes and like a really in-depth like overview. But essentially, like from my point of view, I'm able to hit about 100 frames per second now with frame gen turned on DLSS on quality and all the settings now maxed out to ultra, whereas previously like in all the footage you would have seen, I'm sitting somewhere between medium and high with FSR and that sort of a thing and just maxing everything out now. It seems pretty stable and an overall smooth experience. Something that I have noticed actually just like playing around with the settings is that they don't seem to stick sometimes. Like you turn DLSS to quality and then you open up the menu again and it's in ultra performance for some reason or like some other setting and the dynamic resolution scaling as well just seems to like randomly change too. I think partly this is probably why it's gone into beta to like figure out these sort of issues and like nut everything out but there's also a weird bug that like it says you need to turn vsync toggled off to see the benefit but like you can't toggle vsync off it's weird like I, I think it's just like the the implementing all of these changes to like the setting screen has just like caused some weird bugs and they're not the only changes that they have implemented as well the ability to adjust brightness and contrast is now in the display settings which is huge because that was a big issue i had with the original game it was like one of the only mods that i actually downloaded was like an lut fix to like just like fix some of the brightness and contrast like issues in the game and hdr changes if you are running a hdr monitor you can now make those changes in the settings as well so plenty of different changes just here to like fix things as well as like general performance improvements as well to like CPUs and like other various fixes, which is good. So it's good to see that they've put in a lot of effort for this like DLSS support. It seems like it's still got a little bit of way to go, which is why it's going into beta first, but it's good to see it's not just like, you know, a slapstick approach to just like throwing it in that implementing all of these NVIDIA focused features which is really good to see. The next big change, which is something that I seriously hope they would add and I'm so glad they did is the, they call it let them eat, but by popular request, we have added the ability to ingest food and drink items upon finding them in the environment. You can enjoy those chunks immediately or save them for later. The choice is yours. This is a great improvement because there's almost no reason to pick up food as it gives you like three or five HP. It's really only just a few specifically want it. And then being able to just consume it when you come across it, absolutely a massive improvement, right? Like if you're just missing a little bit of health, you come across food, you just instantly consume it. Same with anything else you come across, it's great. Something that it doesn't mention as well is that this actually works for chems as well so pretty much anything from the aid screen that you can just like ingest you can now just consume it so any sort of like uh, cams med packs that sort of thing you come across you can now just consume all of those without having to pick them up great improvement love this but that's not all that they've added right there's plenty of other fixes and improvements as well so we already touched on like the performance and stability changes to address like memory related issues and leaks as well as gpu optimization cpu performances that sort of a thing there's also some gameplay changes which obviously there's the eating option plus they've adjusted stealth to be a bit more forgiving. They fix that issue with Andreja's head where she becomes permanently cloaked and doesn't have a head, which is hilarious. I'm sad they actually removed it. 
They have fixed an issue that could get prevent players from firing their weapons. They fixed issues with some NPCs could not be seen wearing clothes. They fixed an issue with already in progress skill changes could not stop progressing after reaching Unity and starting a new game. Fixed an issue that prevented you from opening the inventory or saving after entering the Unity. Fixed an issue with mouse movement that could be choppy. Fixed a rare issue that can occur as the home ship to be lost and fixed an issue with the ship services technicians might be missing. I believe that this is a common one for Neon, like if you often found the neon ship technician was missing that should be fixed now and i won't read all of these but there are other graphical fixes that we didn't mention like ambient occlusion in the ultra wide monitors fixing some of the shader compilation that occurs during startup as well as some issues related to the fov slider and improved the appearance of the eyes on crowd characters so all of those memes of those crazy crowd characters that stare at you with, the, with their ridiculous eyes they should hopefully be gone maybe they'll keep tweaking them i guess they didn't like the memes that everyone made from them so it's kind of funny but that is actually being fixed as well it still seems Seems like they stare at you like they still have like that eye tracking it's just that they don't have the ridiculous eyes anymore there are other quest bug fixes as well i'll just flash these up as well if you want to pause the video and actually like read these and see if there's anything that stands out to you like maybe there's a quest that you were stuck on or something like that but they're just like small fixes here it doesn't seem like a massive amount of actual fixes in terms of like quest bugs that sort of thing it's, this patch is really like a based around player feedback and improving the overall game and i guess to sort of touch on that based on my time with the game I think this is a really solid patch, right? Like they are clearly listening. They've added the DLS support relatively quickly considering it didn't exist in the game at all previously. Like I know there's all the talk about how modders did it in one day, blah, blah, blah. But it's a little bit different when you work for a company, a large company where you're implementing changes and fixes that have to go through QA as well as approvals with say parent companies in that case for, you know, getting it onto console and all that sort of a stuff. So I have worked for a software company before. I know how long it takes to do things. And I, I understand from like the community's point of view where it's like, you know, the DLS patch was out in a day. Why can't they do that? But I also understand from Bethesda's point of view that it does take time to implement these things, get them through the pipeline and also QA them and implement them correctly to make sure they actually work. But this is a really solid patch, right? Like it's clear that Bethesda are obviously still invested in Starfield. They're clearly working on it. They're adding these features that we've we've sort of wanted for a little while, especially me, like love me and eat button. That's such a good change that they finally added. But I am glad that they are making these actual changes. Now, there is more that we have been sort of made aware of right like in that initial starfield updates and mod support post they did mention the brightness and contrast controls the hd collaboration menu the fov slider the video dls support 32 by 9 ultra wide monitor support which i don't think has been implemented yet let me know in the comments if it has or hasn't and then the e button for food so realistically they've hit all of those major points that they've like called out that they wanted to actually hit on so it'll be interesting to see what they work on next if they're just going to move say into like bug fixing correcting and then eventually into like the DLC being shattered space the first one next year or where exactly they go like what comes next I'm interested to see if they'll do another like community post to say what they're working on next I hope they do and, and for me personally the main thing that I want them to sort of work on next is some of that exploration stuff like space exploration is like completely fine I don't really think they need to change anything there like that would be a major overhaul to the game but really like on planets right like having these locations be a little bit more diverse and have a little bit more happening on them plus some of those like radio quests that you can get from them like i remember there's one time on new atlantis i ran into a bounty hunter and i did this like random quest it was just like hey let's go to this other location and kill someone and i'll give you some credits or whatever and like i did that and across my like all of my playthroughs and everything i've had that happen to me once on new atlantis and i haven't had that like radio quest happen like anywhere else right like adding those like elements to these different locations would be interesting rather than just coming across so many abandoned x facility and it's filled with crimson fleet or spaces what have you and you just like take them out and then move on like add more of that like i actually ran into a new one today on pluto which was interesting like there were like these uc marines like being trained and that was really cool i want more of that stuff like that's the stuff that i would like to see implemented a bit more like not like massive quest lines just like more diversity in the locations you find on planets but anyway i'm really impressed with this patch and i can't wait for you guys to actually test it out let me know what you guys think in the comments down below thank you guys for watching this video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norza and i hope you have a great day